Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will continue with the group action. Uh, so, we want to actually uh, define some terminologies related to uh, group actions. So, let us start with uh, fixing some notations. So, uh, let us start with G, a group and uh, let us say G acts on uh, some set capital X. So, X is a non-empty set. So, let us say G acts on capital X via some tau. So, in this case we call X is a G set. Okay. So, in this case X is called a G set. So, a G set is a set on which uh, the group G acts okay, via some group homomorphism. So, now uh, actually in uh, if we take the set of all G sets, okay, so if we can consider them as objects. Okay, so, then we can define morphisms between those objects okay, and then we can talk about isomorphism of these G sets. Okay. So, let me first uh, give you one example then uh, that actually motivates uh, the morphism between G sets and uh, isomorphism between G sets. So, let us uh, uh, go back to this uh, the action of this group on the left co sets of some subgroup. Okay. So, let us take G be a group and uh, H be a subgroup of G. Okay. H is a subgroup of G. So, then uh, we have already seen that uh, G acts on this set of all left co sets G mod H okay, via the following uh, formula. So, G dot some A H is given by G A H. Okay. So, this is something uh, we have already seen this is an action of G on G mod H. So, if we think about it uh, using uh, the analysis that we did on this G mod H, uh, we can see that uh, this action is actually what is called transitive action of G. Okay. So, what is uh, transitive action? So, let us uh, define. Uh, so, before that let us see uh, what I mean by that. Okay. So, so, if you look at the orbits of this set, okay, this is our set capital X. So, if you look at this the orbits of this capital X with respect to the action of G. Okay. If we have only one orbit, so then we call that action is transitive action. So, here in this example for example, if we take the orbit of H, the orbit of H is going to be G dot H which is G H for G in G. Okay. So, this is we know that this, this collection is set of all left cosets of H in G. So, that is exactly G mod H which is capital X. So, that means there exists only one orbit. Okay. So, the entire X is given by only one orbit. So, this also can be actually redefined as follows. So, let me define this transitive action precisely. So, we say G acts transitively. on this capital X if there exists one orbit okay, of this uh, capital X with respect to the action of G. In other words, so given any X and Y for any X and Y in capital X, there exists G in capital G such that G dot X equal to Y. So, that means using this action of capital G and picking some element of capital X, we will be able to reach any other element of capital X. So, that is what called transitive action. So, this is actually example of transitive action. Okay. So, in particular, so this is this is a transitive action. Of course, transitive action of G on this G mod H. So now uh, let's try to understand uh, this transitive action. Okay, so 
So, let us start with uh, some uh, G acting on X. Okay. So, X is a G set where G acts transitively let us see. So, then what happens? Okay. If G acts transitively on capital X. So, then as before what we can do? We can pick uh, uh, some element X naught in capital X and look at the orbit of that X naught then by definition it should be capital X. Okay. But what is the orbit of X naught? It is G dot X naught where G in capital G. So, this is all elements uh, under the action of G on X naught. So, now uh, what happens to the stabilizer? Look at the stabilizer. So, stabilizer is a subgroup of uh, this G that fixes this X naught. Okay. So, those G and G such that G dot X naught is X naught. So, this is the stabilizer. We know that this is actually a subgroup of G. So, now orbit stabilizer theorem says we have a natural bijection from G modulo G X naught to O X naught. Okay. There is a bijective correspondence between this. So, how this map is defined? You take some uh, left coset G X, G X naught send it to just a g dot x dot. So, this is the map. Okay. Call this map f. So, this map if you look at it very carefully, okay, this map is indeed a bijective map from one g set to another g set. Okay. So, this g modulo g x naught this can be viewed as g set using the action that we defined in this example. Okay. So, this example for any subgroup G acts on G mod H via this, this left multiplication. Now, if you use this uh, action, we can see that what is there on the left side of this uh, uh, bijective correspondence G modulo G X naught, this is one G set. Okay. On the other hand, you have another G set here. So, that is to begin with, this is another G set and you have a bijective map between these two G sets okay, that satisfies some property. If we look at it very carefully, okay, we can see that so f of g g x naught is given to be just g dot x naught. What is the meaning of this? This you can rewrite f of so okay, so this satisfies this following property. So let us uh, take okay. Uh, maybe I will write this different notation. So, this is let us call it A. So, then uh, this is uh, some A x naught okay, and this is true for any A okay, in capital G. So, in other words what it tells you suppose uh, if you act this element of this uh, capital G on some element of G mod G X naught. So, let us say G dot A G X naught. So, this is what I am talking about. Then look at what is the image of this. So, this will be exactly equal to F of G A G X naught. So, which is going to be G A dot X naught. So, that is exactly G dot A dot X naught. So, basically it tells this map F it actually commits with the action of this capital G. Okay. So, let us try to understand this pictorially then it bec becomes uh, very clear. You have G mod G X naught to this uh, capital X you have a map F and then you have a map given any G in capital G. So, you have a map from G mod G X naught to G mod G X naught this map G. Okay. So, what this map does? It takes A G X naught and send it to G A X naught, G A G X naught. Okay. That is what this map does. Okay. Let me write that in uh, red. So, it takes A G X naught, send it to G A G X naught. That is what this group action does. Okay. So, now you have another map here again F from X to X. So, you have a map from X to capital X 
that is also given by G that takes some x and then sending it to G dot x. Okay. So, now uh, if you think about it, okay, so you can see that uh, this f I indeed maps a g x naught to its image that is a x naught which is x. Okay. So, let us look at what happens to all these maps, let us trace out. Okay. So, we want to say that this f is not merely a map from a g mod j x naught to x, it actually satisfies the following property. So, uh, that is exactly if you look at this diagram, this is actually commutes. So, what is the meaning of that? Let us look at it. Okay. So, when you start with some element here in the top left corner, okay, that is uh, g mod g x naught. So, that element you call it a g x naught. Then look at its image. The image is going to be some x, which is just exactly a dot x naught. So, this x naught is already fixed. Okay. This is something we have already fixed. We are talking everything in terms of the text naught. So, now look at its image. So, this is what this is mapped to. Okay. So, now what will happen if you apply g on this particular element? So, that is going to be g dot x. So, this is mapped to here, which is g dot x, which is exactly g a dot x naught. Okay. But to reach this image, there is another way to actually one can reach the image of this a g x naught using this other path. Okay. For example, you can start with uh, uh, this g mod g x naught and then use this map uh, g and then you can use the map f. Okay. So, in particularly where it will be mapped to under g, so it will be mapped to a g x naught is mapped to g a g x naught. So, then if you see the image of this under f, it is going to be f of g a g x naught. Okay. So, what is the meaning of this diagram commutes? So, we say that the images that you traced using these two different paths, they should coincide. Okay. That is the meaning of this diagram actually commits. So, that means what? f of g a g x naught should be exactly equal to g a x naught. So, in other words, using this morphism, you can rewrite this f of g dot a g x naught is same as g dot f of a g x naught. So, this is the same thing that we have written because on the left side you can see that this is exactly g dot a dot x naught on the right side it is exactly g a dot x naught. Okay. So, this is what one calls it morphism. A map f from one g set to another g set satisfying this property is called morphism between two, those two g sets. So, because uh, we have this bijective correspondence between them okay, and f is a morphism, then one can prove that uh, if f is a morphism satisfying this property, then f inverse is also a morphism. f is bijective and f is a morphism from one g set to another g set, then f inverse is also a morphism. In particularly, one can identify those two g sets up to isomorphism. So, because the g action also preserved, there is no difference between working with uh, one g set and another g set if they are isomorphic. So, that is all we are saying. Okay. So, indeed this definition you can say that this is motivated from this particular example. So, we can also give many examples. So, let us uh, stick with this example. So, now I will define morphism. Uh, properly. Okay. So, here is the definition of a morphism between two g set. Let us call them x and y. Okay. So, let us say x is a g set and y is a g set. Okay. So, we want to say that, so f is a morphism from x to y, then the following conditions should be satisfied. f of there is this action of uh, g on capital X. Okay. So, you take 
any element x in capital X and g in g then g dot x you apply then compute this f of g dot x that should be exactly equal to g dot f of x and this should be true for all g in g and x in capital X. If this condition satisfied okay, so then you call this map f is actually a morphism between these two g sets. So, let us uh, really look at closely what this means. Okay. So, let us say actually this uh, g acts on x by tau. Okay. So, tau is a map from uh, g to s x. So, in particularly given g you have this tau g which is a bijective map from x to x. Similarly, let us say tau dash is some is the g action of uh, uh, capital Y. So, then g to s y you have a map then the image of g under this tau dash is denoted by tau dash g which is a bijective map from y to y. Okay. So, these are all the two ac actions that are actually given. So, now what is this star means? Okay, Let us rewrite and then see. So, you have a map from x to y so which is f okay so fix g in capital g okay so then from x to x you have this map tau g and then from y to y you have a map this tau dash g and then you have this another map from x to y okay so which is again f so now look at this diagram okay this is a square so we want to say that this diagram actually commutes so star is indeed equivalent to saying that this diagram commutes. Okay. So, let us go through again what this what is the meaning of this diagram commutes start with some x look at its image. So, the image will be just uh, tau g of x which is g dot x on the left side. So, now look at its image here in y. So, that is going to be f of x. Okay, let us look at its uh, image under this tau dash g. So, which is going to be tau, da, tau dash g of f of x. So, this is by definition g dot f of x. So, that is the action on the y. Okay. So, we are suppressing the notation and writing dot for all the actions. Okay. That is what we have been doing for many lectures. Okay. So, but I am unrevealing everything uh, in terms of the definition. So, now uh, we can look at image of this tau g of x under f. Okay. So, then we want to see what happens. So, then it is mapped to f of tau g of x okay, which is exactly f of g dot x. So, that is what there on the left side of the equation and we want to say which is exactly equal to so, what you get on the right side okay, g dot f of x. Okay. So, that is what you have on the right side and this you want to be true for all g. Okay. So, if you rewrite this you are getting f of tau g of x is same as tau dash g of f of x. So, this is in shorthand notation simply saying f of g dot x equal to g dot f of x and this should be true for all g in g and x in x. Okay. So, that is what motivates us to define uh, this uh, morphism between these two g sets. So, basically the action of g commutes with uh, okay, this sorry this f actually commutes with the action of g. So, it should be read as follows f commutes with the action of capital G. So, that means it commutes with action of each elements of the capital G. So, that is what we mean. Okay. So, this naturally defines morphism between uh, two G sets. So, now once you have morphism then you can talk about isomorphism between two G sets. Okay. So, I, an isomorphism between two G sets x and y is nothing but a morphism which is bijective. So, I will leave it as exercise. Okay. If you understand the definition it is not very hard to do. 
so the exercise verify if i if we have a bijective map let's say so let's say x and y are two g sets okay and you have this map f from x to y which is a morphism and plus let us say it is bijective morphism. Okay. Because it is a bijective one can define f inverse from y to x okay. so be the inverse. Okay. So, then you can prove that this f inverse is indeed a morphism of G sets. Okay. So, if you start with the bijective morphism between two G sets, the inverse is well defined set map from y to x that will be automatically morphism of G sets. Okay. So, that is the best part of algebra. This is something I already told you when we were doing this uh, isomorphism theorems of uh, group homomorphisms. Okay. So, now uh, we can actually formulate uh, some isomorphism theorems here as well, but let us not get into that. Okay. This is uh, more than enough for us, but when you use group action in other branches like uh, geometry or topology, this G sets play very important role there. Okay. So, if I get time I will actually give some examples uh, geometric examples okay, later in this course. Okay, so, now what we want to do we want to actually uh, uh, look at some more examples of group actions uh, which will appear later in the proof of silos theorems, but, uh, but let us get familiar with uh, those group actions now itself. Okay. So, here I am going to do some examples of group actions and I will tell you like what happens in that. So, some general examples. The very first example, let us look at uh, this finite set 1 to n. Okay. So, now uh, we are actually kind of uh, preparing ourselves to prove Silo's theorem and Silo's theorem it is for only finite groups. Okay. So, you can comfortably assume everything now uh, only happens for finite groups and finite sets. So, let us uh, see this example which is very interesting example. So, you can take this i n to be 1 to n. So, this is just a set of this uh, n elements 1 to n. Okay. Now, naturally I told that S n acts on this i n by permuting the elements okay. by permuting the elements. Now, what we want to do? We want to look at some special sets associated with this i n and then we want to actually make S n act on that. Okay. For example, one can look at the power set of i n. So, this is the set of all subsets, the set of all subsets of i n okay, including empty set. So, then S n naturally acts on that, naturally acts on this power set. So, how it acts? So, you can see that suppose if I give you one subset, let us label them as i 1 etcetera i k. So, then if I take some sigma, the action is given by. Okay. So, you just simply send it to the image sigma of i 1 etcetera sigma of i k. So, now note that if you start with uh, some subset that has exactly k number of elements then the image of that subset under any uh, element sigma of S n will be having exactly k number of elements. So, in particularly S n actually acts naturally. So, this is just restricting uh, the action of S n to the invariant subset okay. acts on this what is called this i n of k. What is i n of k? i n of k is those subset of i n such that the cardinal t of that is exactly k. You collect all the k element subset of this i n, call it i n k, then this is invariant. Okay. This is invariant subset of this power set of i n. 
So, in particularly if you have invariant subset the group action can be restricted on that subset okay, that actually gives you natural action. So, this is something we have seen or otherwise you can directly check okay, this is actually an action. So, what is the action? Action is given again by the same formula. Sigma acting on the scale element set is just take the images of this i1 etc i k. So, which is again k element set. Okay. So, now how many elements are there in this uh, i n k if you look at it. So, the number of elements in i n k is nothing but n choose k because you are having n elements and you want to choose uh, k elements from that that is exactly n choose k. So, using the explicit formula this is exactly n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. Okay. This again can be justified using orbit stabilizer theorem. Okay. So, what is or what is the orbit? Okay. So, for example, if I take uh, this 1 to k, so this is an element inside i n of k. So, then you can see that the orbit of this is going to be exactly equal to i n k. Okay. So, in particularly the action of S n on this uh, i n k it is actually transitive action. So, this is not just action this is indeed transitive action. Okay. So, that is easy to verify because if you start with uh, some subset you label them as i 1 etcetera i k in the increasing order and then you define sigma. Okay. So, let me just prove it. So, you start with some subset which has let us say uh, k number of elements you label them i 1 etcetera i k and then you write it in the increasing order. So, then you define sigma. So, this is defined to be you send this 1 to k to i 1 etcetera i k and then rest of the elements you just fix. So, then it is easy to see sigma dot s is uh, sorry sigma dot this 1 to k is exactly capital S. So, that proves that this action is indeed transitive action. So, in particularly if you use this orbit stabilizer theorem that says that the orbit the cardinality of the orbit is exactly equal to the cardinality of the group divided by the cardinality of the stabilizer of this i n k. Okay. But what is the cardinality of S n that is n factorial. So, this is something we have proved already n factorial divided by k factorial into n minus k factorial. So, then it says that the stabilizer of this i n k inside S n has exactly cardinality k factorial times n minus k factorial. But if you think about it, if I start with some sigma inside the stabilizer of i n k, so then you can see that sigma maps okay, 1 to k to exactly 1 to k. So, that means sigma restricted to this 1 to k is again a permutation on 1 to k. Similarly, sigma maps k plus 1 etcetera n to again k plus 1 etcetera n. So, in particularly sigma will come from s k direct product s n minus k, where this s k just permutes first k coordinates, okay, it just permutes this and then the rest of the things is permuted among themselves. So, this is what happening here and this is permutes here sigma phi. So, this is all coming from 1 to k. So, this is coming from k plus 1 to etcetera. Yeah. So, I will leave it to you to check. So, basically the stabilizer is exactly s k direct product s n minus k. So, in particularly this formula that we have written this orbit stabilizer formula that is actually justified. Okay. Uh, so, these kind of examples are very very important. So, you can also work out some details. 
So, what happens if you take uh, the symmetric group acting on this the power set and then uh, fix some element look at the orbit of that and then look at the stabilizer ok. The same analysis what I uh, did now will work out for that also ok. So, we will see some more examples uh, in the next lecture ok. I will stop here. Thanks.